Today, we're unpacking it. We're unpacking advice from our experts on how to maximize success across various assets that you have that are often overlooked. That could be from your personal well being to how you acquire real estate, lead inclusive teams, and master your on camera present presence. <laughs> and we're diving into all of those to optimize them with our experts today. So let's go say hi to them. Hi, Adriana. Hi, Laura. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. I'm Adriana D'Agostino, holistic health coach and wellness expert. You can find me on adrianadagostino.com and I'm in Sydney, Australia. Welcome, Adriana. And hello, Liz Booth. Hi, Laura. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Liz Booth. I'm a buyer's agent, and you can find me at lizboothbuyersagent.com.au. And I am in Sydney, Australia. Welcome, Liz. And hi, Minette. Hi, I'm Minette Norman. I am an author, a speaker, and a leadership consultant. You can find me online at minettenorman.com, and I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. Welcome, Minette. And hi, Liz Wool. Hi, I'm Liz Wool. I am with virtual speaking and, and presentation coaching. And my website is virtualtraining.pro. And I am based here in Nashville, Tennessee, which no. we call Music City. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Music City. And we're so glad to have all of you here because we have such a wealth of wisdom in this show. And I can't wait to unpack it and reveal to our viewers how to optimize results with these various assets. So let's go to Adriana first. What advice do you have for our viewers on their personal well-being? Well, okay. Thank you, Laura. Look, the first thing I'd say is find time to prioritize you, whether that is getting a relaxing massage or facial, which also gives you a very relaxing, relaxing state, but or having a cup of tea, reading a book, but even just getting it outside and a really super easy way to start is simply putting your feet on the ground, walking on grass, sand, or even dirt. Your asset is you. So finding a way to connect your feet to the bare ground has been shown to reduce inflammation, stress, and pain in your body, as it did for me. And every step towards healing yourself counts, no matter how small, and you will see a difference as long as you start. I love that. And, you know, it's not the first thing you think of to put your feet on the ground, right? And I'm assuming no. bare feet, correct? Bare feet. And uh, look, every time I speak about it, I get chills because it is such a great, great feeling. And it's so, so simple. So it's my big, my big number one. Yes. All right. Feet on the ground, people. Love it. All right. And <laughs> let's go to the advice from Liz Booth. I know you work with first time buyers. So what that's, a, they need some assets. What could you recommend? So um, me, I'm I'm your best asset when you are looking for a property uh, to buy. So it's really about getting your Saturdays back. So um, here in Sydney, you know, our open days are Saturdays and Wednesdays and some areas are Thursdays as well. So if you're, you know, looking for property, you can spend a very long time. I get clients who have been searching for two, three years. So, you know, you're never going to get that time back. So the other thing is, um, you know, you have professionals who are very specific um, for, for things like if you need accounting, you'll, you know, you see um, an accountant for tax matters, um, a legal matter, you'll see a lawyer. So when you are buying a property, I, I sort of think, well, why wouldn't you use a buyer's agent who's a property specialist um, to help you make one of the biggest financial decisions that you'll make in your lifetime? And I want to highlight why that's so important. If you use just an average uh, non-specialist, that realtor, real estate agent might not be in that buyer's corner. They're supposed to be, but they might just want to get the sale, right? Um, uh, well, they, you know, they're in sales. So, um, you know, our, our role is to um, get the, uh, the best result for the buyer, so and 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 in a, a really tight time frames, the longer that you're, 
you know, not buying a property, it's actually costing you money because the, the market moves so quickly. So, yes, so we, we um, you know, we know, we know the tricks. We, you know, we give our clients some very specific instructions on um, when they come with us to open homes um, and it's pretty well, don't say anything. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so um, we are we are your best asset when it comes to purchasing a property. That's great. And speaking of getting time back and being able to lead your teams and have time for your work and your personal life, I wanted to hop on over to Minette and say, what advice do you have for those leading teams? Well, my work really focuses on how do you create an inclusive environment where diverse teams can thrive. And this can be really challenging. I mean, first of all, you're talking about assets. So in this case, if you lead teams of people, those people are your assets. And what we have to overcome as leaders is that like any human being, we are drawn to people who are the most like us. That is just innate in us as human beings. That's called affinity bias. But if we're trying to lead diverse teams with really all aspects of human diversity, we have to overcome that, that bias, that natural bias, and instead get very curious to learn from the people who think differently from us, who have different backgrounds and different life experiences. And so one of the, the most important things we can do as leaders is to listen with true curiosity. So listen with an open mind and an open heart, get curious to understand the people who think differently from you, and then make sure that you're not getting defensive if someone challenges you, because ideally you want to be challenged. You want new and innovative ideas, and you have to make it worthwhile for all of those voices to come out and be heard and to ensure that there are no negative ramifications if someone speaks up and perhaps even challenges the status quo. I almost think that's a radical thing you're saying in today's society. Um, it's it's very much needed, and I'm so glad you're saying it because that that the assets of diversity can provide results beyond what you think you're capable of. Would you agree? Oh, I completely agree. And there's lots and lots of evidence that diverse teams outperform homogeneous teams, but only if there's a a safe and inclusive culture for all those voices to emerge. If you just hire a diverse team and you don't focus on your culture, well, then people will conform and they will stay silent because they don't feel that their voice is really welcome. And you're certainly not an optimized team at that point. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Thank you for shedding the light on this for us. And now over to Liz Wool, your advice on your presence. What assets should we tap into? The number one asset that brings you the most success is you. Absolutely you. Focusing on this camera and thinking about your best friends with their pictures above your camera. And you think about, oh, I'm so excited to see them because you have to bring more and more energy in this virtual environment. And the way to bring that energy is to stand. Stand because it brings up your posture like a ballerina. You can bring in more breath and you can also use your body. And if you're disabled and you're sitting in your chair, just still sit erect and use your arms and bodies. The other point with this major success factor is something that I'm using right now and that's my voice. Make sure to use your voice with passion and clarity, but also the emphasis where you want it. Because in this virtual medium, all of your body, that includes your voice and your body gestures within this frame, catapults your connection for people to see you as likable and credible and want to do business with you. And then finally, recognizing the number one asset when those cameras are off, I think it only happens to me, Laura, is that your mindset shift is it's not about you. And stay focused on your audience, serving them and helping them with all of you. And you will have success in everything you do in this virtual world. I, bravo. I totally agree with that, all of it. And especially the last part, which is if you want to overcome that, uh, that nervousness, it's not about you. Forget about you. <laughs> Easier said than done with a little practice. I'm sure you would agree. That is the best way to, um, to really 
shine really online is really served. Thank you for saying that, Laura, because people come into this environment nervous or scared. Some people come in much more comfortable than in person of what I, what I coach. And the one thing I always share with people is find out the why of your nervousness and your anxiety, because then by you diagnosing that, my first career was a nurse, is when you diagnose that anxiety, then you can find the solution. The solutions were a little bit different for everybody. But thank you for asking that and for sharing that insight. It's very yeah. valuable for our audience today. Yes, I agree. And all of you have provided such rich insights for optimizing results with all the various assets that you specialize in. So let's get to know you a little bit better. So I want to go over to Adriana and learn who do you work with? What do you do with them? Um. I'm a holistic health coach. I'm really passionate about helping women over 40 solve their fatigue, digestive issues, brain fog, so that they contribute to a vibrant, happier and healthier life at every stage of their life. My aim is to make a lasting impact on their lives uh, by inspiring them to make big shifts in their health with small changes that will fit into their lifestyle. I, I have witnessed so many remarkable transformations in my clients uh, with their increased energy, sleep, weight management, um, and overall well-being that it is such a joy to see. That's great. So do you have a story of how you got to this work? I do. Um, I, I, in my mid-30s, after I was rushed to emergency um, after a life-threatening condition, now never before having had any health issues, not even tonsillitis or appendix, nothing at all. So living a healthy lifestyle and unbeknownst to me, this was the beginning of my journey, my health journey. And in this process of healing myself and looking for holistic ways as well, I learned about the significance of sleep, diet, exercise, happiness, happiness is a key thing, and the impact of stress on one's health. And I just wanted to start sharing that with others to be part of a movement, a health movement, and help make a difference in people's lives and let them know there are ways that and things that they can do that um, to make them have their journey of health be a much more fulfilling one. That's wonderful. And do you have some training also that you did in the to become a health coach? Yeah, so um, on this journey, I ended up becoming uh, doing training with the Institute of Integrated Nutrition and became an accredited health coach. And um, and on and through that, I then became part of a health um, uh, organization with having sustainable um, vegan sort of products, as well as looking at um, uh, acupressure. Um, stem cell regeneration patches. Um, so I do look at very much a holistic approach to one's health, which is not just health, it's every aspect of their life. So it's a circle of life where what's happening with their relationships, their careers, their life, and all of that was part of this um, this accreditation course that I did. Wonderful. Well, it sounds like you're helping a lot of people and thank you for that. So Liz, I want Booth, I want to come over to you and ask you, who do you work with? We know, and just reiterate that. And what do you actually do with them? Sure. So um, I work with uh, people who are wanting to buy a property. So um, not everyone that um, that comes to us, you know, is is struggling um, in in terms of. Um, you know, they've just missed out auction after auction. We also have professionals who are just genuinely time poor, and um, and young investors as well who you know they're they're head down in their career, and it, this is a chore for them. Um, it lights me up to go and find property for people. You know, help them overcome um, any of the challenges that they have with purchasing wherever they're at in their property journey. So for me, the added benefit then is that, you know, I'm saving them time, um, I'm uh, saving them money. Um, and, you know, once um, they realise that, you know, I've got them a great deal and this is now their home and they can get on with doing the things that they think are more important for them, um, uh, it's, it's really satisfying to see that and I'm really honoured to be a part of that journey. So I, I basically give them back time 
um, yeah. which you know, um, and they they can then, you know, redirect that however they need to to make their lives better. So, mm. but we all need a house to live in. We all need somewhere to live, and it's not the easiest thing to do, especially in Sydney. Is a really hard market. Yeah. Like, so, how know. did you get to this uh, <clears throat> state of being a buyer's agent? Uh, so, um, <laughs> I was in. Re- I was a relocation consultant for um, for many years, and um, and I loved I loved that. That was sort of my you know first um, foray into finding homes. Um, for people to rent and I um, had a high profile client um, come into Sydney and he wanted to rent but he also wanted to buy um, so we would um, go on our search and um, and then he'd say oh there's an you know there's this property I'm interested in could we um, go have a look at that um, and so we'd go to the auctions and we we worked together for about six months um, and he said to me you know what, you would be a brilliant buyer's agent. He said, you've just got it. You're absolutely natural. And he planted the seed. I wasn't ready at that time, but it was always there. So I'm forever grateful um, that he sort of gave me that notion and the confidence that that um, that I should go and do that. And then my time came and I, I did it and I love it. That's great. What's uh, really impressive is not only do you have the credentials to be a buyer's agent, but you have the history of being a relocation expert. So you know what people are dealing with when they're going into a new home and a new location. It Exactly. And that skill. So it really, for me, I can narrow down really quickly um, for a buyer. So because I take the brief and um, and it's you know, you just can get them on that page very, very quickly on what they're looking for. So, you know, awesome. while some people might take a month to sort something out, I can do it in a, in a much tighter time frame. Awesome. Well, wonderful. And I'd like to go over to Minette and now learn about who do you work with and what do you do with them? I mostly work with corporate leaders, although I also work with some public sector leaders and their teams. And what I do generally is often I'll be brought in initially for a talk or a workshop, but then sometimes, and and ideally it leads to a longer term consulting engagement where I can really help the leader and their team create an environment where everyone can thrive and fulfill their full potential. Love that. So tell us, how did you get to this work? <laughs> yeah, I have sort of a, a an unusual story in how I came to this work. I spent 30 years in the software industry before I became an author and a speaker. And my last five years in the industry, I was in a very senior role. I was VP of engineering in a large tech company. I had a thousand people on my org chart, a lot of you know power and privilege in many ways. And yet at the same time, I felt often that I was not part of this insiders club. And the more I talked to people, the more I felt like there is clearly an insiders club and an outsiders club. And when you're not on the inside, you're not listened to in the same way, you don't have the same opportunities as others. And I realized that this is a huge problem and leaders often don't even know they're doing it. They're, they're creating these, these conditions. And so ultimately what happened to me was, was not a great story. I got a new leader who came in and kept really bullying me and taking away my responsibilities. And I just realized I am done. However, I'm not done. I'm done with working in the software industry, but I have learned so much in these three decades and 20 years in leadership. I think I can help leaders do better. And I wanna spend this new phase of my career helping leaders and their teams create conditions where no one feels they don't have a voice. No one feels that they're on the outside and that everyone can truly contribute. And so that's what I'm doing at this phase of my life. And I absolutely love the positive impact I see in the teams that I get to work with. And It's perfect for this time, but we are in our culture and our society. We're ready for it. People are, corporations are wanting it and the individual support that you're providing is so you're like you wanted it now you're letting them actually live it and breathe it and yeah. transform so thank you for that work you're doing on the um, corporate and public sector sides and so I want to go over to Liz Wool and ask you Liz we tell us a little bit more who do you work with what do you do for them 
I work with women business owners specifically to master this virtual delivery space that allows them to harness their power, amplify their message through that asset, they can now grow their business very successfully in this medium. And what's very exciting about this is it's a combination of public speaking, but then nuancing it and customizing it for this virtual space. Yeah. When we are in the virtual space, it's not going anywhere. So tell us about how you came to this work. Thank you. And the way that I came to this work really was, it looks like it was planned, but oftentimes in life, things aren't planned because my, the person you see here today, Laura, it was a very different person as a child. In grade school, I had had a couple of speech impediments and one of them was st 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 stuttering. And I had great speech therapy for six years and I, and I was able to resolve that. But then I came into my first job that part of my responsibilities as a manager was to do presentations in front of like 800 people. And when I talked earlier about the reason for your anxiety goes back to the why and how you prepare for it. For me, I just had to prepare for that and then get really good mindset. And I tell people, Laura, the first time I presented I was behind a podium and my leg just shook like crazy. But the podium was stationary, big oak, so it didn't matter. And then I got comfortable in that speaking at conferences in front of 800 or 1,000 people. But then we came virtual. Everybody, I did not like that camera. The first time mm -hmm. I came on camera, I mm -hmm. shut it off. I said, oh, you all do not want to see me. You just want to hear my voice. But then throughout both of the, all of those situations, it was a constant theme. And that theme was mentors and a curiosity to improve and to grow. And now my passion is to give back to women in business, to harness that power that I harnessed to be the best of them, their unique and wonderful them. They don't have to be like me. They just show up being them and they will be successful. Absolutely. Way to empower women in front of the camera in particular. So thank you for that. All of you are incredible experts in your own areas of the assets you provide and help people optimize. And you are the type of women we have here at Women Speakers Association. I wanted to hear from each of you. What is the value that Women Speakers Association is for you and or you're going to um, receive? going forward. So I thought I'd go over to you, Adriana, first. Well, thank you, Laura. Look, what I really love about the Women's Speakers Association is being part of a community that supports and encourages women and uh, being able to connect with women internationally, globally, is, is a big part of why I joined. But also to grow my visibility, to become a speaker. I've always wanted to do that. And this is just such a great platform for that. And with the support and guidance, uh, it's, it's a wonderful place to be. Yeah, I'm glad you put up, you, you highlighted the support, the guidance and the platform. And of course, we have the, uh, the members uh, globally that you can connect with. Mm -hmm. so you're, you're, Absolutely. you're in the right place and we're glad. You're <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Liz Booth, share with us, what is the value of Women Speakers Association for you? Um, for me, with Women's Speakers Association, I've connected with um, an inspiring and supporting group of women. Um, I learn and grow with each online meeting and I also hope that I'm adding value to the group as well. Um, but um, the other thing is that um, I do want to one day <laughs> um, be a, do, do public speaking um, and that that's you know long it's it's down the track um but it's definitely on the agenda so um I'm also very inspired to be around all these amazing women and speakers and um I love I love all the sessions they're awesome I know right and I have news for you is you actually are public speaking right now <laughs> I know I know <laughs> I know that <laughs> um but yeah I sort of have this you know 
<laughs> I have a plan. <laughs> you do. Okay, good. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. So Minette, share with us your what is the value of Women Speakers Association for you? Well, I joined Women Speakers Association, even though I've been speaking for a long time, but there's something about a community that is very powerful. And it can it can actually seem quite lonely when you're out speaking, you're, you're alone, you go and speak to a group, and then you, you get back on that plane or turn off your computer and you're alone. So there's something so nice and inspiring. I think Adriana and Liz, you both use the word inspiring. We can learn from one another. I'm hoping to share what I know. I want to be generous in my knowledge. And I know that other women are generous with their knowledge knowledge too. And I also love the global aspect of it. I've loved to work globally and it's great to meet women from all over the world. Yeah. And just even out of this gathering, you're going to be able to have new contacts in other content continents. <laughs> awesome. So thanks, Minette. So Liz, we'll share with us the value of Women Speakers Association for you. For me, it is about being with other women who are in business, aspiring to be speakers, are speakers, mentors, because it's a sisterhood. And we have a community of women. I think women know that we're a sisterhood wherever we are. And that is something I'm so passionate about. Also, the constant learning for me as a, as a speaker and as a coach, I want to learn more. I want to learn from Manette. I want to learn from Adriana. I want to learn from Liz. I want to learn from you, Laura. So I can constantly improve, fill up what I call my little toolbox and be able to help the people that I serve as well. And I just really love being a member of Women's Speakers Association because there is so much value in being with like-minded people who know your world, who can support you and say, I've been there. Let me share with you how I got through it. <laughs> oh, wonderful. And you definitely will have your toolbox overflowing as you've already seen in today's show. And for those of you watching who want to do what Adriana, Liz, Liz, and Minette have done and become premier members, feel free to go to joinwsa.com and go ahead and take the plunge and join our sisterhood because that is exactly what we have here. And women supporting women, helping them in so many ways, whether it's connections, global connections and tools and tips and expertise. And you never know, your next best friend might come out of the Women Speakers Association here. And also, if you're not sure what we're all about, you want to put your toe in the water, go ahead and get the speaker, the speaker success plan, which you can find at speakersuccessplan.com. And you know, you'll get on our list, you'll find out when our next online events are, and we'll stay connected and give you some even free resources there. So thank you all ladies for joining us today. It's been a very rich show, and we welcome you back soon. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.